Joachim of Fiori, also known as Joachim of Flora and in Italian Gioacchino da Fiori c. 1135-30 March 1202, was an Italian theologian and the founder of the monastic order of San Giovanni in Fiori. Later followers, inspired by his works in eschatology and historicist theories, are called Joachimites. Biography <inaudible> <inaudible> Born in the small village of Celico near Casenza, in Calabria at the time part of the Kingdom of Sicily, Joachim was the son of Maro, a well-placed notary, and of Gemma, his wife. He was educated at Casenza, where he became first a clerk in the courts, and then a notary himself. In 1166–1167 he worked for Stephen du Perch, Archbishop of Palermo c. 1167–1168 and Councillor of Margaret of Navarre, regent for the young William II of Sicily. About 1159 he went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, an episode about which very little is known, save that he underwent a spiritual crisis and conversion in Jerusalem that turned him away from a worldly life. When he returned, he lived as a hermit for several years, wandering and preaching before joining the Cistercian Abbey of Sambicina near Luzzi in Calabria, as a lay brother, where he devoted his time to lay preaching. Under pressure from the ecclesiastical authorities, he joined the monks of the Abbey of Carrazzo, and was ordained a priest, apparently in 1168. He applied himself entirely to biblical study, with a special view to uncovering the arcane meanings he thought were concealed in the scriptures, especially in the Apostle John's revelation. To his dismay, the monks of Carrazzo proclaimed him their abbot c. 1177. He then attempted to join the monastery to the Cistercian order, but was refused because of the community's poverty. In the winter of 1178 he appealed in person to William II, who granted the monks some lands. In 1182 Joachim appealed to Pope Lucius III, who relieved him of the temporal care of his abbey, and warmly approved of his work, bidding him continue it in whatever monastery he thought best. Joachim spent the following year and a half at the Cistercian Abbey of Casamari, where he engaged in writing his three great books, his dictations keeping three scribes busy night and day. There the young monk, Lucas, afterwards Archbishop of Casenza, who acted as his secretary, was amazed to see so famous and eloquent a man wearing such rags, and the wonderful devotion with which he preached and said Mass. In 1184 he was in Rome, interpreting an obscure prophecy found among the papers of Cardinal Matthew of Angers, and was encouraged by Pope Lucius III. Succeeding popes confirmed the papal approbation, though his manuscripts had not begun to circulate. Joachim retired first to the Hermitage of Petrolata, writing all the while, and then founded the Abbey of Fiori Flora in the mountains of Calabria. He refused the request of King Tancred of Sicily R. 1189-1194 to move his new religious foundation to the existing Cistercian monastery of Santa Maria della Matina. On Good Friday in 1196, Empress Constance, also Queen of Sicily, summoned Joachim of Fiori to Palermo to hear her confession in the Palatine Chapel. Initially the Empress sat on a raised chair, but when Joachim told her that as they were at the places of Christ and Mary Magdalene, she needed to lower herself, she sat on the ground. Fiori became the center of a new and stricter branch of the Cistercian order, approved by Celestine III in 1198. In 1200 Joachim publicly submitted all his writings to the examination of Innocent III, but died in 1202 before any judgment was passed. The holiness of his life was widely known, Dante affirmed that miracles were said to have been wrought at his tomb, and, though never officially beatified, he is still venerated as a Beatus on May 29. He theorized the dawn of a new age, based on his interpretation of verses in the Book of Revelation, in which the Church would be unnecessary which, of course, was considered heresy and in which infidels would unite with Christians. Members of the spiritual wing of the Franciscan order acclaimed him as a prophet. His popularity was enormous in the period, and some sources hold that Richard the Lionheart wished to meet him to discuss the Book of Revelation before leaving for the Third Crusade of 1189-1192. His famous Trinitarian I -E -U -E interlaced circles diagram was influenced by the different three circles Tetragrammaton Trinity diagram of Petrus Alfonsi, and in turn led to the use of the Baromian rings as a symbol of the Christian Trinity and possibly also influenced the development of the shield of the Trinity diagram. Theory of the Three Ages The mystical basis of his teaching is his doctrine of the eternal gospel. 
founded on an interpretation of Revelation chapter 14 verse 6, Rev 14 to 6. Then I saw another angel flying in mid heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. NRSV translation. His theories can be considered millenarian. He believed that history, by analogy with the Trinity, was divided into three fundamental epochs. The Age of the Father, corresponding to the Old Testament, characterized by obedience of mankind to the rules of God. The Age of the Son, between the advent of Christ and 1260, represented by the New Testament, when man became the Son of God. The Age of the Holy Spirit, impending, ushered in by an angel with a sword, when mankind was to come in direct contact with God, reaching the total freedom preached by the Christian message. The Kingdom of the Holy Spirit, a new dispensation of universal love, would proceed from the Gospel of Christ, but transcend the letter of it. In this new age the ecclesiastical organization would be replaced and the order of the just would rule the Church. This order of the just was later identified with the Franciscan order by his follower Gerardo of Borgo San Donino. According to Joachim, only in this third age it will be possible to really understand the words of God in its deepest meanings, and not merely literally. In this period, instead of the Perusia, second advent of Christ, a new epoch of peace and concord would begin. Also, a new religious order of spiritual men will arise, thus making the present hierarchy of the church almost unnecessary. Joachim distinguished between the reign of justice or of law in an imperfect society and the reign of freedom in a perfect society. Topic. Condemnation Thomas Aquinas confuted his theories in his Summa Theologica, but in the Divine Comedy, Dante Alighieri placed him in paradise. Among the spirituals, the stricter branch of the Franciscans, a Joachite group arose, many of whom saw Antichrist already in the world in the person of Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor who died in 1250. As the appointed year approached, spurious works began to circulate under Joachim's name, De Oniribus Profiterum, an Expositio Sibylli et Merlini, Exposition of the Sibyl and Merlin, and commentaries on the prophecies of Jeremiah and Isaiah. The Fourth Council of the Lateran, in 1215, condemned some of his ideas about the nature of the Trinity. In 1263, the Archbishop Fiorenzo enhanced the condemnation of his writings and those of his follower Gerardo of Borgo San Donino, joining a commission in the Synod of Arles, in which Joachim's theories were declared heretical. The accusation was of having an unorthodox view of the Holy Trinity. His views also inspired several subsequent movements, the Amalritians, the Dulcinians and the Brethren of the Free Spirit. All of these were eventually declared heretical by the Catholic Church. Of importance is the fact that Joachim himself was never condemned as a heretic by the Church, rather, the ideas and movement surrounding him were condemned. Joachim the man was held in high regard during his lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Literary references W. B. Yeats' short story, The Tables of the Law tells about a single surviving copy of a certain book by Joachim of Flora and its powerful effects on its owner. Joachim is mentioned in Umberto Eco's medieval mystery The Name of the Rose. His influence on the Franciscan spirituals and the rediscovery of his books foreseeing the advent of a new age are part of the book's background story in which an inquisitorial debate is held in a remote monastery where a number of murders take place. The sprawling conspiracy satire and magical manual or literary leg pull entitled The Illuminatus, trilogy of novels by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea also reference Joachim of Fury repeatedly. His writings fit well with the eschatological tone of the story. The authors attempt to confuse matters and give an air of authenticity to the madness of the various plotlines by including references to real people and events. This technique was used without irony decades later in Bajant and Lee's The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail and again in The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. A hoax circulated that Barack Obama referred to Joachim's third age three times in his campaign speeches during the 2008 presidential election. He is said to have spoken of him as a master of contemporary civilization who had sought to create a better world, but there is no evidence Obama ever quoted or mentioned Joachim. Topic. Works 
Liber Concordiae Novi AC Veteris Testamenti Harmony of the Old and New Testaments, Book of Concordance, completed in 1200. Expositio in Apocalypsum Exposition of the Book of Revelation, finished around 1196–1199. The Liber Introductorus in Apocalypsum, sometimes cited as a separate work, forms an introduction to this. Psalterium Decem Corderum Psaltery of Ten Strings. Tractatus Super Quatuor Evangelia Treatise on the Four Gospels, lesser works include Henealogia Genealogy, written about 1176. De Prophetia Ignata, datable to 1184. Adversus Judeos, also known as Exhortatorium Iudorum, probably written in the early 1180s. De Articulus Fidei, probably written in the early 1180s. Prophecio Fidei, probably written in the early 1180s. Tractatus in Expositionum Vit et Regul Beati Benedicti, sermons belonging to the late 1180s. Prefacio Super Apocalypsum, written around 1188 to 1192. Intelligentia Super Calathus. Written in 1190-1. De Ultimus Tribulationibus, which is a short sermon by Joachim. Enchiridion Super Apocalypsum. Written in 1194-6, this is an earlier and shorter version of the Liber Introductorius that prefaces Joachim's Expositio in Apocalypsum. De Septem Sigillus. It is uncertain when this was written. The Liber Figurarum was drawn together soon after Joachim's death in 1202, and is a collection of 24 figura drawn by Joachim. The name was used in 13th century manuscripts to describe a work attributed to Joachim of Fiori, but it was only in the mid 20th century that it was identified in relation to three extant manuscripts. The late 13th century set of pseudo prophecies, united with a later series under the title Vaticinia de Summis Pontificibus, was falsely attributed to Joachim of Fiori without any basis in truth. Topic see also Cult of the Holy Spirit Ernesto Buoneuti, one of the first researchers in Joachimism, List of Christian Mystics, Vaticinia de Summis Pontificibus Topic Notes Topic Further reading Thomas Gill, Zeitkonstruktion ALS Kampf und Protestmittel, Reflection in Uber Joachims von Fiori Trinitats Theologische Geschichtskonstruktion und deren Workingsgeschichte, in Constructions of Time in the Late Middle Ages, ed. Carol Poster and Richard Utz, Evanston, Ill, Northwestern University Press, 1997, pp. 35 to 49. Henri de Lubac, La posterité spirituelle de Joachim de Flore, Lethialo, 1979 and 1981. In French, Marjorie Reeves, Joachim of Fiori and the Prophetic Future: A Medieval Study in Historical Thinking. Stroud, Sutton Pub, 1999. Matthias Riedel, Joachim von Fiori. Denker der Wallendetten Menschheit, Königshausen and Newman, 2004. In German, Gianluca Potesta, Il Tempo dell'Apocalisse, Vita di Joachino da Fiori, La Terza, Bari, 2004. Valeria de Fraja, Oltre Saito. Joachino da Fiori e Loordine Florence, Viela, Roma, 2006. E. Randolph Daniel, Abbot Joachim of Fiori and Joachimism, Variorum Collected Studies Series, Ashgate Publishing Limited, 2011. P. Lopatron, L'Effigie dell'Abate Joachino da Fiori, in Vivarium, Revista di Science Theologique dell'Istituto Teologico S. Pio X. D. Cotanzaro, Anno XX, N. 3. Edizioni Publisfera 2013, pp. 361-386. The Eternal Gospel by Leos Janacek, a 1913 composition described as a legend for soprano, tenor, chorus and orchestra. Topic: External links. Works by or about Joachim of Fiori in libraries, WorldCat catalog. International Center for Joachimist Studies. Joachim of Fiore's Constitution of Future Society. Joachim of Fiore's Circles Diagram and Trinitarian Symbolism Neo-Joachimism in German Catholic Encyclopedia Joachim of Flora